Hi, and welcome back to episode three of Understanding Darktable. In this video, we're going to look at importing images. Now, I mentioned in the first video in this series that I was not a huge fan of the importing mechanism within Darktable, and the reason for that is because I like to sort my images depending on what type of images they are. As an example, if I was to come over here to my photos folder, you can see that I've got you know, a boudoir folder, I've got the images that I shoot for my son's cadet unit, I've got my commercial work, I've got my eBay photos, I've got family photos, you know, I've got personal projects, I've got my test shots. So depending on what I've shot, I want the images to go into the relevant folder. Now, in Darktable, that unfortunately requires coming into preferences, going to session options, and entering a path in this first field here. And as you can see, there's no browse icon. So you can't just browse for the folder that you want and have it automatically populated into that field. So you've got one of two options. Either you type it in manually, which means you have to know the exact path, or you come to your folder, choose the folder you want, copy the path, go back to dark table, select that field, paste, and close. Now, that's way more effort than it should be, in my opinion. But now that I've set that path to the test photos folder, because the images we're about to import, I just want them to go into my test photos folder. So now, in light table view, we click on the import module in the top left, and you can see that we've got options for import an image, import a folder, scan for devices. So I've got a CF card, because I shoot Sony, so I'll now put that into the card reader of my PC. Okay, so now that I've inserted my memory card into the card reader, I can click on scan for devices, and we can see that Darktable has recognized that there's a memory card there, so we can go import from camera, and that will bring up this particular dialog box. Now, there's a couple of settings there, but I've never had a need to go in and use those. I don't shoot with JPEG, I only shoot RAW, so if you were shooting RAW plus JPEG, but you didn't want the JPEGs to be imported, you only wanted the RAW files, you could click that Ignore JPEG Files checkbox. Um, and as for the override today's date, I'm not sure why you would need to do that, but anyway. So back here on the Images tab, if you want to assign a job code to this particular import, you can do that through the job code field there. So if you'd shot, say, somebody's wedding, you might want to go, you know, Billy Bob and Jane's wedding, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you could do that. I don't need to do that. I just want to grab these five images here. I don't want these two black images at the end. So I've just clicked on the first one, shift click on the last image that you want, and select import. And Darktable will then import those raw files into my test shots folder. OK, so now those images have been imported. And if I was to go over to my test shots folder, we can see that under 2018, here we are, 0705. Those are the five images that we just imported. And Darktable is using these XMP sidecar files for all of the metadata, and we spoke about that in the first video. OK, so now that our images are here, we can move down to this next module, Collect Images. By default, Darktable will assign each imported job a film roll number or name. There's a lot more to cover on this Collect Images module, and I might make an entire video just on that. But moving down to the next module, Recently Used Collections. So these are the last 10 collections that I've accessed via Darktable. So this is sort of like a recently used documents list in, say, LibreOffice or Microsoft Word. Uh, that you can just go back to some document, or in this case, collection of images that you've recently accessed. And then image information 
will give us information on each particular image. So this panel will only ever refer to one image at a time. You can select all five images, but you will notice that depending on which image you mouse over, the information in this image information panel will change to reflect the image that you're currently moused over. And it's all the usual metadata that you would expect to find. Sadly, a lot of the information gets truncated, things like you know, the, the lens here. But if you do mouse over it, you will get a text pop-up with all of the information that's in that field. I also find a little bit frustrating that the full path will also get truncated if you've got lots of folders. But that's okay. You can usually you know, find where the image lives simply by mousing over the field and waiting for the text to pop up. Now, there were those other couple of options in the import module. Import an image or import a folder. So let's see how that would work. Why don't I select these last two images that we just imported and I will click on the selected images module over here on the right and click remove. Those two images have now been removed from the database. They still exist on the hard drive, they're just not in Darktable anymore. So if I wanted to bring those back, I could click on image, go to my test shots folder, 2018, 0705, and I know that it was those last two images, so I can simply select the first image, shift click for the last image, and click on open. Now you will notice that within this particular dialog box, the image import dialog box, we have the option to include some metadata on import if we want to. So I can click that box to say yes, apply this metadata to any images that you import. And you can have presets set up which you can access via this drop down menu. There are some Creative Commons setups here already. I'm not using any of those. I generally use Creator Publisher and Rights. If I was importing a collection of images that were all going to have a common tag, then I could certainly put that into the tags field to speed up that process of tagging my images. But I'll leave that for now. Actually, I'm not even going to apply the metadata to these because I really don't need it. And click open and Darktable has now imported those two images and they're now back in our grid view. So if we go back to our collect images, yeah, okay, so it's still showing the single film roll for today's date. So maybe all images imported on one particular day will simply appear in the same film roll, even though they may not necessarily be part of the same shoot. Something to be aware of, I guess. And we should also look at the import folder option. So if I was to go to, say, folders, come down to test shots, come down to 2018. Let's just choose whatever these images were. I have no idea what's here. Hopefully nothing embarrassing. That's good. So I'll select all of those images, click remove. So now there are no images in the test shots folder from this particular date. Again, the images are still on the hard drive, they're just not in Darktable's database anymore. So we'll go back to the import module, import a folder, and we can go back to the 2018 folder, simply left click once on that date folder that we want to import. You'll notice that under import options, we've got a couple of new things here. Import directories recursively, simply means that if there are subdirectories inside this particular folder, that those subdirectories should also be scanned for images during the import process. Again, the ignore JPEG files, so if it's a folder you've imported that's got all of the raw and JPEG files that you shot when you were shooting raw plus JPEG, you can tell Darktable not to bother with bringing in the JPEGs, you only want the raw files and again, apply metadata on import. So we click on open, and those images now get imported again, and they've got 
a film role title of the date that they were shot, which has been taken from the name of the folder, presumably. Okay, that'll do it for this video. In the next video, we'll start looking at the right-hand side modules and seeing what we can do with our images in the light table view. Talk to you soon.